Okay, so the purpose of this um, training course is to give an overview, to get people familiar with the concept of diameter. So it does go in through some base history of the protocol, where it came from, and then it does get to the nitty gritty of the actual protocol, of how the protocol is used. So, so for some of you, hopefully, by the end of the training, the training is such a level, not to be too engineering focused, but hopefully it'll give people all around an idea of exactly what uh, purpose of this is. Okay, so at the high level, Diameter is a AAA protocol. Authentication, authorization, and accounting. Um, so, what do we mean by authentication? That means that a user is uh, identified that the user is legitimate. So, in, in, in effect, that's logging on. It's logging on to a system and saying, is this a user? I understand, and, and he can get access to the service. Authorization, that gives the concept of allowing and defining what the user can actually do. To put it down into a simple concept of mobile, that would mean can they do voice, data, SMS, national, international calls, etc. So that's authorization. Accounting is then when the customer, the user actually does something, you're monitoring, you're recording, and also limiting what a person can actually do. So that's a basic accounting thing. So if you're on prepaid, obviously accounting becomes quite important in real time. So every time you try to do something, you'll be monitored, recorded, and your usage can be limited just down to the number of calls, how much cash you've got in your account, etc. So Diameter, the actual protocol, uh, was initially came up in 1998, many, many years ago, as these protocols do. A group of guys got together and said, well, okay, Diameter's pretty, uh, sorry, Radius is a bit poor, let's come up with a new protocol called Diameter. So that was 1998. In 2000, a working group was set up for the IMAX area to say, look, we've got to come up with a new way of doing all of our LTE long-term evolution of the network, and we need to have a signaling protocol which allows us to do AAA. So they looked at the limitations which Radius actually had. So number one, design for dialog services. Obviously, what they wanted to use it for is a lot more uh, above than just doing dialog services. So problems, reliability. So, Radius goes over UDP, unreliable uh, protocol, and obviously what you need to do is you need to have lots of different retransmission protocols underneath them to make sure that the packet reliably gets to the other end, but none of this was defined within the Radius spec. So what we've got to understand is this is nothing to do actually with what's being implemented in the network of Radius, but to do what was specified. So when you start trying to connect disparate products together, they should work not they have different implementations of how they do stuff. UDP, security, they had no transport layer security defined. Of course you can put it over TLS, of course you can set up a VLAN, etc. But there's nothing in the specification to say that this was a mandatory requirement. You must be able to support this. And again with um, Radius, they all had the assumption that you were putting out your Radius networks in a trusted network. There was no concept of non-trusted network. It was it could be UDP, it could be uh, the transport layer that needs to be secured because it was always within a whole, a trusted network. So again, we talk about failover between different servers. If you had a system where one bit of your, uh, your accounting system went down, there was no, no way that the actual server, the client, it's called the client, had a way of knowing the state of the service to try and communicate with another service. What would generally happen? You'd have to wait until you got no response back from one server. Then you'd wait a period of time, then you'd try another server. There was no way of me saying, ah, that server's gone, so I'm going to try the other server. So, agent support. Again, Radius didn't have a concept that there was actually anything routing it apart from IP routers in the middle. So, there was no concept that we have an SSM of STPs, there was no concept as we can now see a diameter of routing agents. Etc. They just made the assumption that you'd go from the client to the server. Now, the problem that has is that obviously you would have to, if you open up to a uh, inter networks, you would have to let the other network know all of your protected accounting devices. So anyone could just throw messages willy nilly into your network. 
And the other more important point was that Radius has no real concept of handling IP mobility, which is basically has no support for roaming. So when you roamed around from different networks, from different areas, there's no way of Radius being able to handle um, that roaming. So in 2000, they came up and they said, okay, let's look at four different protocols. So they had SNMP, the one protocol that they could go for. They then said, let's advance Radius and make it Radius++. Plus plus. Um, and then they went for uh, COPS, which is a common open policy service, which is used for authentication within networks. And they had the, the fourth option, which was Diameter. And surprisingly, very quickly, they came to the conclusion that Diameter gave them the flexibility and the advancements they wanted within, um, with what they were trying to achieve with this working group. They then went away and they did put advancements, an advanced diameter to the, the initial release of the ROC, uh, obviously what we're basing diameter networks on today.